truthfully, it does have a, a good message, if you can believe that, you know, that um, uh, just to appreciate your life, you know, and if you don't, you're going to get knotted up in these horrible traps. Hurt you, right? you can open up that door. Open it. Today, actress Brooke Adams is here. She made a name for herself as a movie star in Days of Heaven with Richard Gere and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Now she's making her mark as a painter. And later in the show, Betsy Russell from the Saw movies will join us. Great to have you here today, Brooke. Thank you, very much. It's great to be here. Well, you know, it's enough to have success in one artistic field. I mean, you've done movies with Richard Gere and Donald Sutherland and Sean Connery and Jeff Goldblum, and I could go on and on. Uh -huh. um, but now you're making your mark as a painter. Um, transitioning into that. How do, you, how do you go from movie star to painter? Um, well, slowly. <laughs> I was, uh, I was uh, becoming a mother. I had had a, a, a daughter and I just needed to get, I, my second daughter, I needed to get out of the house. Mm. And acting wasn't, um, it, was, it was still You can have too much time around the house, can't you? Oh boy. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. Oh, especially with my second daughter, she was a handful. Anyway, um, movies were kind of, I was getting older and, and movies are really sort of for the young, I guess. And uh, I just said, I'm not gonna do it anymore. And I thought people would clamor and beg for me to stay in the business, but they didn't. So I started taking an uh, art, and, art a painting class. Well, I've taken a look at some of what you've come up with. Um, you, we got a couple of examples here today. Uh, this one with the young girl. Yeah. Is, can you tell me about this? That's a, a that was a commissioned piece. This, uh, Mary Lou Bella, actually, that's her daughter. Sure, a director from Girlfriends that I've interviewed. Uh huh. Uh, she asked me to do her daughter for it was she got it at an auction at the school thing. So I worked on it and I decided that. Uh, I like to put her under her dining room chair table because. Oh. So that was kind of her attitude, a little Looking bit. Looking for peace and quiet, or getting away from the, hiding from the kind crowd, or something. Kind of hiding, or? hiding, and maybe being a little bit petulant. Ah. So I put her under is there. Is she at that age? Is that it? She was. She was oh. younger. Now she's a dream. And this one is you and your kids in Martha's Vineyard, or the kids in Martha's the Vineyard. The kids. Uh, my my older daughter is jumping off the dunes, and then two other uh, kids, little boys, are, are with her. You like Martha's Vineyard? Oh yeah. We, we have a house there. Oh, oh, so you spend a lot of time there? Well, not enough to keep the house. I think we may sell it, but we love it. Great in the summer, right? Yeah. Okay, and this one is? This is a portrait of a family that um, I gave to this woman on her 50th birthday, and it's um, <clears throat> a director friend of mine, Barnett Kelman, and his wife and their kids. Oh. I noticed on your website that you've done um, behind the scenes of Hollywood type mm -hmm. of how, how does that, well, it's a nice tie-in, I suppose, for you, with, with your uh, well, acting Well, exactly, yeah. I, um, I'd always noticed when I did movies or television shows that a lot of the crew seemed recognizable from one show to another. They seemed to be in costume and makeup, just like the actors, and mm. you could recognize them from, for, with the job they were doing from the way they looked. So I, um, I, I thought I, I'd like to do paintings of them and give the people behind the scenes a little a little bit of the starlight, and um, it turned out to be a very successful idea here in Hollywood. I did a show, and oh. uh, the first night of the show, I, I uh, sold nine of my 14 paintings. Wow, wow. It was the first time I'd ever done a show, so it was And you've thrilling. had several gallery exhi exhibitions. I've had two at this gallery, Hamilton Galleries, he out here in Santa Monica. Hmm. Um, the second one is a benefit for uh, Rob Lamont swim uh, camp and it's for uh, kids from the inner city getting to go to the beach in the summer so I did all paintings of kids on the beach and I'm going to do another show in Martha's Vineyard this summer. Oh, oh not bad at all. Yeah. Um, you were telling me beforehand when we were talking uh, yesterday that um, about your theory, you said it's all about the lighting or yeah. light, That's how, what does that mean for your art? Um, the light is really what tells the story about faces, about everything that you see. It's, it's uh, if you get the light right, and it's how it hits the face tells you how the face sh is shaped, and um, basically that's really all I try to do. We, we in this class that I took, we we were taught to paint with tone, no color at all, 
just so that we could see if we could make um, realistic paintings with just the light. And we weren't allowed to use color until we'd gotten that right. So I, um, I got it right, and now I'm doing color. <laughs> Well, despite the fact that you have the, the budding second career with the painting, mm -hmm. um, you've actually stuck your toes back into acting a bit. Um, your husband, Tony Shalhoub, is the star of Monk. Yes. And you've done some guest starring on Monk? I have. I've done three different roles on the show. Oh, so three different characters completely. Three different characters. <laughs> but I guess it's just spaced out or I mean, separated enough in time where they make you look different, or how does that? Um, well, they were just a little, a little reticent in the beginning, and they wanted me to kind of wear a disguise or something. but. I kind of said, really, a disguise? I'll just act different, and so I did. I did um, one very sort of dramatic role where my son had been kidnapped and I had to cry and that stuff, and then another was a, a stewardess on an airplane who Monk is driving absolutely insane. Oh. And I, he, he, I end up That's not from your drunk. personal life, is it? <laughs> well. <laughs> We'll talk later. <laughs> I'm kidding. By the way, I shouldn't say this, maybe, but somebody told me off the record. I'm telling you here on the record, but um, I don't know if I can say this. But um, somebody told me though that your husband just dotes on you, and he really cares for you a lot. And you don't always hear that in this town. So I'll just. Talk, but that's what I heard he, off the record. He's just a great so you know husband, that he really and he does sort of. I, I I sort of did know that. Yeah, he adores me, which is great. I adore him too. He's the best. So was it fun working with him then on the show? Oh yeah, that's how we met. We met doing a play on Broadway called The Heidi Chronicles. Huh. And we didn't start going out then, but we um, started going out about a year later and got married six months after that. And uh, we love to work together. In fact, he directed his first and only film so far is a film that I starred in, that I produced, that my sister wrote. Ah, and I and believe that we he's had in. Yep. Made Up. It's called Made Up. You can get it on Amazon.com. Um, it's it's a comedy about beauty and aging. Oh, yeah. So it's it's but it's very funny, and I know a lot of women. It's a real. I guess it's a chick flick in a way, but young girls and not so young women uh, really like this movie. It speaks to now. Them. Does it relate to Hollywood? Per se, or is it more life in general? Or? Life in general. It's okay. it's every woman who's toying with the idea of having facelifts and mm. Botox and all of that stuff. My daughter in the movie wants to become a cosmetologist, esthetician, which is to me in the film the most horrible thing a person could ever want to be. I oh. say I was, you know, got used to the idea of heroin addict or nymphomaniac, but cosmetologist, please. But she decides she really wants to do a makeover on me, and I'm mm. very reticent, but I do it, and I'm thrilled with how I look. She so does a fake facelift. Oh, oh. You know those things that people wear sometimes? I don't know if you know this, but actually old movie stars before facelifts were so mm. popular wore these things that held their face up and that went around with elastics, and you put a wig over it, and oh suddenly you'd look beautiful. So I. Do These days, they just they can use soft lenses for one thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, they always could do that. I think they just put stockings over them or something. And let alone all the other stuff. Well, I haven't seen this. I've seen some of your work, like Days of Heaven, which I uh -huh. thought was just great. But um, what, what's your take on that? What do you any thoughts on? I mean, since you did a movie about it, um, pro or con about you know facelifts and things? Yeah. Well, my character is very con. I'm not con at all. I think um, women derive a lot of their power from their looks. If too much? I mean, in Hollywood, is there too much concentration on it? Or oh, definitely. There's way too much concentration in Hollywood, but we're exporting it, and so the rest of the world seems to be getting catching up pretty quickly. But I think that there is a real bottom line truth to the fact that women do get their power from the, the, their beauty. Men get it from money. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no reason why a woman shouldn't try to look as beautiful as she can. I, those of us who want to just do it au naturel, that's to be commended as well, but um, I, I don't have any any judgment. I don't make any judgment on that. Whatever you want to do is fine. All right. <laughs> well, and I mentioned Days of Heaven, um, I, which I lost last night, and again, as I told you before, and it reminded me a bit of Atonement, although it uh -huh. came first, uh -huh. in the sense of, you know, a, a very well done love story, but just yeah. kind of a d depressing ending in effect, or I mean, you know, sad. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, 
What was it like working with Richard Gere? Because that was your first film for both of you, right? It was. It was. Um, he had been a friend of mine already, so mm. we were pretty comfortable with each other. And uh, we had the, it was a triangle situation with Sam Shepard, mm. who's pretty dishy, too. <laughs> so I, there I was in between these not two. Not a bad gig, huh? No, not a bad gig. <laughs> and then time. I noticed at the end, so, so she was, well, involved with Richard Gere, Sam Shepard, and then it looked like at the end you went off with a soldier? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I went <laughs> off with him. I was pleased that they were still looking uh, at me, yeah. is all. After both Richard and Sam were killed in the movie. Well, thank you very much for being here, and I wish thank you the best you. of luck with thank your paintings. You. Thank you, Gregory. We'll be right back. I want to play a game. You just lean forward into the knives with your face. You press hard enough, and you'll release the arm and the leg restraints that bind you. Ah! Press hard, though. Live or die, Cecil. Make your choice. Ah! And we are back. Joining me now is Betsy Russell from the Saw Movies. Pleasure to have you here Hi. today, Betsy. Nice to meet you. Now, I just want to say, I have to, I told you this beforehand, I was a wimp. You know, I went to see the first Saw, and it got too much. I couldn't handle the, <laughs> right. you know, I was. Too much blood. Yeah, I saw Hostel 1 and 2, and then after that I said, okay, I think I've seen enough of the Hostel movies. Yeah. But because I knew I was going to be interviewing you, I made a point of seeing Saw 4. Good. And um, although I had a problem with the DVD, and I still want to know what the ending is. But, uh, but so, so what are your take on it? But I know there's a, I, but I was happy to have you here, because I know that there's a, a cult following yeah. for those already. Mm -hmm. So what, what's your take on that? I mean, on the one um, hand, you know, there, there's the violence, but yet people love it. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, it does have a, a good message, if you can believe that, you know, that um, uh, just to appreciate your life, you know, and if you don't, you're going to get not enough <laughs> <laughs> these horrible Slice traps and stuff. No, seriously, though, I do like the message, kind of like, you know, appreciate what you've got going on and uh, don't abuse it, your time here on Earth. And so that part of it is good. The gory part, you know, if you really took out the gore, and um, just kind of watched it without the blood and guts and stuff, it would really be a thriller. So mm. I think it really is kind of an amazing story that they tell, and I'm really proud to be part of it. It's the number one horror franchise in history. Wow, they, and you're already working on Saw 5? We just finished. Just finished. Yeah. When, when will that be out? October, Halloween, every year. Oh, okay, well, perfect yeah. timing. And you started out with a smaller part in Saw 3. Yes, I did. Um, the writers and producers were fans of mine, and they said, um, would you like to be in the movie? And I said, sure. So they said, do you want to be a nurse, or do you want to play uh, Jigsaw's love interest? And I said, hmm, that's a tough one. I think I'll play his love interest. That's yeah. the killer in the movie. So they, it was a flashback scene, about three seconds in Saw 3, and then um, they had three groups of writers writing Saw 4, and they were going to pick one of the three different scripts, and one of the writers had me really heavy in the in the uh, script and oh. picked that one, so I got lucky. I so got you get to part. be the, the wife or slash love interest of mm -hmm. the killer. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Now, and, and in five then you also continue in a pretty big way, I take it. Yeah. Or you can't give away too much. I'm in five. You're, okay. I'm definitely you're, in five. You're in five, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. But he does have the part, um, well, I, I, I for, you know, I remember the, the blood and a lot of, you know, from, from the first one. Yeah. But your part about the message does seem to be there in four, where they honestly try to make him kind of socially redeeming in a twisted kind of way, or you know what I mean? Not that yeah. they're saying to emulate him, but even he is trying to mete out justice, sort of, maybe? Well, he, well there's a reason. There's a reason. a reason to his madness, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you've seen all of them, you know, I, w I won't give it away in case people haven't seen it, they're gonna run out and see it, especially saw four that I was in. Um, but yeah, the, he has a reason why he went crazy and why he puts people in these traps too. You know, Do you think, now, now the one problem I wonder with this, or, or I mean, well, partly logistical, I guess, and even just on a different level, um, I remember back to the days of like Nightmare on Elm Street, where it was really more the thriller, well, of course, Freddie had, the, you know, he did a lot of slicing and dicing. I left that movie theater so damn scared, by the way, when I, after I saw Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, yeah. it was just, it really freaked me out at the time, even though I was like 16 years old. Uh -huh. But do you think that it kind of raises the bar, you know, especially now with Hostel and Saw, I don't know if they're competing, but at least in the same kind of genre with, 
I guess what I'm saying is just the audience become desensitized where, you know I mean, the more you do, you have to do more just because yeah. people have seen it. And well, they're definitely smarter. The audience, the Saw audience is very smart. I mean, and they're fanatics. They will take one picture that's released, you know, before the movie comes out and they'll dissect it. Every little tiny thing in the background and they'll blow it up and they'll say, what does this mean? And there's chat rooms and people talking, they're fanatics. And yeah, they definitely keep wanting more and more and more. So more the writers more. and producers work around the clock, literally from the time they start thinking about the next script to the time that it's out on the screen. They are really working around the clock because it happens so quickly. It really does. And they keep having to go stretch and stretch and sure. make it a little more gory and a little smarter <laughs> every time. I think they've done a great job. And I still have to, you know, I, I do still cringe when I watch those movies or I look away, you know. But do you think, though, that, um, what was it fun? You know what I mean? Despite there are buckets of blood flying around, but is it just, is it fun to make that kind of a movie? Um, I mean, or what's it like behind the scenes, you know? You know what? The Saw set, I have to say, is the most well-run, smoothly, you know, oiled machine of any set I've ever been on. And they just treat their actors so well, and they really know what they're doing. I mean, they, they have done this five times, same crew, same place. Oh. Well, they change places in Toronto and stuff, but, mm. but it's really well run, and it's just a great set. I mean, Darren Bowsman was the director for two, three, and four, mm. and he's a fanatic. He's a savant. He's loud and crazy, and he's got his dog there, and the dog's yelling. You know, he's saying, Chance, that's his dog's name, Chance is action, and people are screaming, they're crazy. <laughs> and then the last director, who was the art director for two, three, and four, became the director, first time director, oh. David oh. Hackle. And he's, he's also brilliant, but he's very calm, and you know, the set it was completely different. So yeah, it's it's tons of fun, and it's it's just really, just an amazing set. Everybody's great at what they do. It must be some pretty elaborate makeup, or you know, or however they're CGI or whatever they're doing, or is that? I guess you're not probably in a lot of those scenes, at least for yourself, or do you see them filming them anyway, or you're around when I that's see going on? Everything. Or, or you see everything. Yeah, <laughs> I see a lot. So, you know, we, we're checking out all the sets, and we're there even on the days we're not filming sometimes just to check it out, and, you know, the extras are there just watching. I mean, it's really, I mean, you really do kind of feel like you're history in the making. I mean, it's pretty, it's really special franchise, and it's just fun to watch everything being made. And you said the number one. Number one wow. horror franchise in history. Wow. <laughs> I that memorized. And yeah. it started because it started out with what a fairly small budget, right? The original song. Yeah, they they started it uh, for a million bucks. They a made million it. Bucks. Yeah, maybe a million two, something like that. And um, the first one I think grossed thirty million. I don't know. All I know is they four hundred million worldwide for all of them so far. And uh, these ones, I think it, each one is a little bit more expensive, but they're still under ten, ten oh, million really? to make. Really? Yeah, so they're doing well. And I remember the spoof from um, Scary Movie. I think the one with wasn't Dr. Phil was in that. I think the spoof. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So. It's been. I mean, they've done satire. They've done spoofs. Everything. You know. I mean, it's just been saw mania. So it's. I mean, people people write in and they say, you know, I want Betsy's jeans that she was wearing in this scene. How much? <laughs> I'll pay five hundred. I'll pay a thousand. Whatever it takes. Have they for been these selling jeans. stuff on eBay or something? Oh or yeah, there's a really whole cool. website. Yeah, for saw paraphernalia. So, I don't know. It's pretty cool. So you made your start um, what, in, in the 80s in San Diego, right? Even in high school you were mm -hmm. acting. Yes. When I was very young, I think I saw myself, uh, my mom or somebody videoed me, and I was like, I look good. I want to be an actress. <laughs> and so I just got into, I mean, it sounds terrible, but that's really what happened. And I got well, was into, that in high school or junior No, that was when I was like eight years old. Eight years old. Yes. Oh, so really young. Yeah, I was eight years book. old, and I was like, wow, I look cute. But then also... You know, I Love Lucy was my favorite TV show, and I was oh. imitating her, mm. and I just love to make everybody laugh. So you have the comedic side. I do, that I've never really, I mean, I took... Um, yeah, so it's interesting, you have a horror film of all things. Yeah, you know, well, I've done, a, I've done a little bit of everything, but I took improv for about 10 years mm. when I first mm. moved to L.A., and, you know, Harvey Lumbeck was a great improv teacher back then, I took from him, and... And I just love comedy, and I've really never had a chance to show that side. But I would love to, that's my hope. And um, yeah, I just pursued, you know, lots of theater down in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And then when I was 16, I got a Pepsi commercial. Pepsi. And they kind of featured me, and I was on a horse. That's If you ever saw Private School, you know that I do well on horses. Oh. <laughs> so you were in a Pepsi commercial on a horse? And I then, was. And what, somebody saw you, or how did that? Well, the director, there's about five of us girls on a horse. It was my first time doing anything, and he kind of, you know, picked me and said, let's kind of feature her. I was like, wow, this is cool. Everyone's looking at me, and I'm doing pretty well, and this is like a lot of fun. 
And then I found out that I got to graduate high school early because I had enough credits. I'd worked on the school paper and I had so much fun doing it, but I got extra credits. The day after graduation, I was in L.A. Wow. Yeah, I <laughs> You did. wasted no time to... I didn't. The next yeah. day, I said, I'm a city girl. I want to pursue acting. And um, I got my first big break uh, like two years later in private school. Two years later. Yeah. I mean, I did some, you know, little episodic stuff and all that. But, yeah. So you were known for... I mean, you did several... I mean, you had, even now, like a cult classic kind of thing with several of those movies. Um, yeah. Yeah, those little 80s movies have kind of um, made a little bit of a comeback, I guess. If you look at YouTube, I don't know, there's lots of trailers for them. So, oh, they've already got those. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was great. It was fun. You know, in those days, you didn't really say, okay, I'm going to do a movie this week, and then I'm going to go be on a TV series next week, and then I'm going to cut an album. It was kind of like, hmm. I just said I wanted to do movies, and I thought that was, you know, I thought I was doing these big movies, which in, in those days, you know, they kind of were big budget and stuff. and. I was just having a blast all through my 20s, and then I, yeah. I got married and got pregnant, and the next thing you know, I started having babies and decided it was a lot more fun to stay home with my kids, stay than, home with the kids. than go pretend to be somebody else. We'll be right back. And we are back with Betsy Russell today talking about her Saw movies. And But you, you took a break. You took time off talking to... Talking about herself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I started having those little boys. And let me tell you, it was really, really tough to go on an audition. Go on an audition after that. It was really, really hard to leave home. Hmm. So I just decided, you know what? I'm having more fun. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hang out with them for a while. So I did for a long time. <laughs> and and then uh, yeah, and then all of a sudden this kind of happened, and it's been great. They're older now, and you know, kind of more independent. And they how, think how old are they now? Twelve and fifteen. Twelve and fifteen. Yeah, and they think it's they're not the troubled teens or problem age or whatever they say. Knock yeah. on something, not yet. No. My oldest son is a nationally ranked surfer. Oh, great. That's yeah, great. he's an athlete like his dad, and the other one is just loving being a kid, you know. So um, yeah, I got back into the acting. Were you concerned when you took time off because sometimes people take time off and you know may not come back or I, I don't know I mean um, I'm just or not was it really was it was just the right thing yeah, to do when you it was a it? concern of mine that okay now I'm never going to be an actress again but mm -hmm. I just sort of thought I didn't really have a choice you know I really mm -hmm. got the kids so. yeah I really had the kids and was totally fulfilled being a mom all the time I really was I got into all that and I guess I did think as they grew that I would just jump back into Get auditioning back into and see what happened and. Yeah, it didn't happen exactly like I thought, but I'm really, really happy that it happened. Sure, so. well, you're back on your way. And did you did you miss it when you were out of it? Or I did, yeah. I did. Yeah, I think once you, it's like riding a bike, though. You know, you never really forget how to do it. It's like when I went and started doing Saw again. It was the camera was in my face, and I had this really intense role. I mean, Saw three, you know, I just kind of did it and didn't really think about it and didn't really think anything might come of it. But in four, I pretty much. I really had, you know, the female lead, and I sure. had to carry this legacy, and I was, I had a lot of pressure on me, and I was kind of freaking out. I was, you know, the night before my first day of filming, I was like, am I going to let everybody down? You know, is this really going to be great, or is it going to be awful? And literally, after a few takes, my first day, um, I started getting emails, you know, you're doing such a great job, we're oh. hearing, you know, in L.A., and they were already in touch with the director, and I just breathed a sigh of relief, and I just kind of felt like it was riding a bike, like I was back. Great. Yeah. Now, you said your kids are getting up there a bit in years. I mean, well, not that it's that old, but uh, <laughs> what, would you want them to go into acting or no. think about that? No. No. I don't think so. I just want them to enjoy being kids, you know, and... Because um, it's easy here in L.A. or Southern California to get kind of wrapped up in, well, as you know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I don't really find that kids, um, I think they either really have to want to do it or their parents really have to push them. push them. I mean, if they see their parents doing it or whatever, I don't think it's something that they're just going to say, hey, might as well do it, it looks like fun. Mm -hmm. You know, they either have to have that passion or they really have to get pushed. But so That's far, your I kids noticed. don't seem to... They could care less. Mm -hmm. You know, they think it's kind of interesting that we're doing it and stuff that I'm doing it, that their dad you know is on TV and stuff but they really want to make and it is, show you, their father is Vince Van Patten yeah Vince Van still is Vince Van Patten yes, yes, yeah, who, still is. who is a host on the world poker show world travel world poker travel show one of those yes yeah yeah so they think it's great but the older one especially wants to na make a name for himself you know as a professional surfer hopefully well, despite the acting and the kids, you have found time to have, you're working on a master's in spiritual psychology? Yeah, at USM, University of Santa Monica. It's mm. a master's program in spiritual psychology in my free time, 
which has literally changed my life. So I what drew really you to that and, and what have you gotten out of it? How has it changed your um, life? I think because, uh, you know, I'm in a relationship where he has a kid, I have kids, we have exes, we mm -hmm. have exes, exes, <laughs> you know, and I kind of feel like it's just such a network situation every day and, you know, I tend to get upset about this one and this one's, you know, making me cry, this one's happening. Mm -hmm. So many things in my life I felt like I was always so sensitive mm -hmm. and I was also very interested in psychology. So I kind mm -hmm. of like, when I heard spiritual psychology, I just sort of thought, well, I'm going to check that out and I really, really love it. So it's helping in every aspect of my life. And do you tap into that for the acting as well? Do you think that that's... Um, um, I think it definitely helps. But I think at this point, um, yeah, I just tap into my to my life, into my yeah, into my soul, into it. Kind of just helps you find find the spirit and everything. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Betsy, for being here. I really appreciate yeah. it. I look forward to seeing you in Saw Five, and I'm going to see the last ten minutes of Saw Four. That darn DVD wouldn't play, but great. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.